Hello, and welcome to the Link by Lead podcast by Lee and Associates Commercial Real Estate Services. Welcome and thank you. And thank you to my esteemed guests. Today's topic is managing and motivating commercial real estate agents. And today I'm really pleased and honored to have two great guests, both leaders and presidents of Lee and Associates offices, Dave Howard and Dwight Hotchkiss. So just a quick introduction of my guests, uh, Dave Howard, uh, currently the president of the Lee and Associates Atlanta office, also providing leadership, direction, recruitment, and tremendous help in launching our Nashville office, which actually launched last week. Um, and they're doing a fantastic job in recruitment and the growth of our Nashville presence. Dave has a really long history of uh, commercial real estate corporate experience, um, in addition to uh, service as a U.S. Coast Guard. Um, thank you for your service, Dave. Uh, Dave was a director of real estate at TRW, vice president at CBRE, uh, CEO of Resource Commercial for 10 years. Uh, he's been with Lee for 17 years, and it wouldn't be appropriate if I moved on without saying how great of a leader he has been with our North San Diego Carlsbad office in growing that presence to being a really large market leading dominant presence. <clears throat> and also the work that Dave did over the previous two or three years in the Charleston office with the recruitment and giving them structure and process and protocol and did a great job leading them to some of their most uh, productive years. Uh, Dave is also uh, a producing broker and works with some national and international clients throughout the US. So thank you, Dave, for joining. Thank you. Uh, Dwight Hodgkiss, president of our Lean Associates Riverside and Temecula offices. Uh, I actually have known Dwight for the better part of 25 years. Uh, Dwight was, uh, at the time when I entered the business, one of the top producing, most well-respected industrial brokers in probably the most competitive industrial market at the time in central Los Angeles. So Dwight, thank you. Uh, Dwight's been in the business for 32 years. He had a 17-year career in central Los Angeles and 15 years in a variety of regional, local, and national leadership roles. Uh, he was the president of uh, Industrial at Colliers for seven years, responsible for all of their national practice groups. And for the past three years, he has provided outstanding leadership for the Lean Associates Riverside and Temecula offices. Uh, Dwight also has a very robust resume uh, with regard to his philanthropic efforts. Um, he's been a board member at the Ronald McDonald House, Homeboy Industries, and he's currently a board member at the Albert and Elaine Portrait Foundation. So thank you both. Thank you, Dwight. Um, so today's topic, how do we do this incredibly challenging job of motivating commercial real estate agents? So I want to start a little bit um, and talk about the junior age. So we're, we're a growing company. We are trying to grow, get younger. We've been incredibly successful in geographic growth and bringing new people into the business. Dave, I'd like to talk to you first about what your process is about bringing on younger brokers and, and how you're executing that. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much. Appreciate all those kind words. Um, you know, you're right, we're a growing firm. And as we continue our expansion, uh, we, we do really need to continue to develop our youth and make them mm -hmm. productive members. They wanna make a lot of money. We want them to make a lot of money. And one of the things that we do is to really vet them out first. We just don't go in and hire anybody. They have to come in through an extensive interview process. Uh, they take uh, a couple of, uh, you know, personality profile tests usually, and we have them meet uh, with individual partners, younger agents in our office, so they get a real feel of what our office is and what it's all about. Once they are brought on board, uh, we put them in a, you know, we call it an associate uh, research program or a transitional research program for the ones that have no real estate or no sales experience, and that's a one-year program that has been very, very successful. And I think we'll probably talk about that in a little bit later. But the other thing is just setting expectations for them. So, excuse me, uh, our agents, all young agents, uh, first year in the business, their expectation is they make $150,000 gross a year. And uh, that's imprinted in their brain. And so they know they got to go out there and make things happen. 
Uh, they are very quick and adaptive. We like to hire ex-athletes, military personnel, people that have a very strong work ethic and are willing to put the time and effort in in order to be the best they can be. Because I tell everybody, don't be average. This is not a business to be average in. You have to be very best you can be. And so we do spend a lot of time. It's myself, it's our senior partners, our senior uh, agents, you know, look at the youth as, you know, the future. And so it's incumbent upon us to give them as much training and support as we can. Great. Thank you, Dave. So Dwight, you have a, you also have a, a really large, diverse group in a really large, important market in the U.S. So tell me a little bit about what you are doing when you're bringing on, you know, new to business, zero to five years in the business, recruiting them from other firms. How, how are you... How are you coaching them, teaching them, and managing their expectations? Yeah, you know, in all the roles I've had at, at different firms in here, I think I've always had a very much of an acumen towards the growing of the bench of mentoring and growing young professionals. When I came here to these offices three years ago, we have an incredible array of senior brokers, but you really need to build your bench to keep your relevancy for years to come. So. We I came in to review the landscape of things and saw that we had a good core of associates, but needed to expand that bench. Um, so what I did was looked at where could we go to find someone that has two to three years of experience, whether in our industry or in a different sales role, so that the ramp up time is much quicker than someone who's right out of school. Um, and we've been successful in bringing on uh, quite a few um, that have either come from computer sales or some other avenue. We also have brought in some people right out of school. And what we've done is build a foundation of a training program, I think, that has three components to it. The real estate fundamentals, the sales skills, and lastly, six, a success module. <clears throat> and what we want to do is build up their, their knowledge and their confidence through role playing, through bringing in our shareholders to be clients in that role playing, to bring in outside resources like uh, real estate attorneys so that they understand what the red flags can be on contracts. Um, I think it's vitally important that you have um, business planning that takes place, not just with the associates, but with the shareholders as well. So I sit down at the start of the year and the middle of the year with all my associates to really plot out how and what they're going to do with this training, what their focus is on their clients, how they're interacting with their shareholders. Um, and then lastly, you know, making sure that we have an <clears throat> that I have an open door policy that they feel confident and comfortable to come in and share whatever concerns they have. And I think it's allowed them my associates the last three years have had their greatest um, production per year in our offices. And I think that training module of twice a month and all the different things we're doing are allowing for growth and success. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Dwight. So I, I know, so it sounds like there's a similar process in place. Dave has developed what he has termed and I think has a legacy now within Lean Associates, the transitional researcher <laughs> position, which I think is that bridge and that education and provide some mentoring and support from the local office. And then Dwight, it sounds like you're doing very much the same on a one-to-one -one basis between you and your associate group. And I think that helps give connectivity. I think that that's special at Lee and Associates because we don't have a program that cycles you through all the different product disciplines. We, I think we're teaching you about where we can fill a hole within an office and, and giving you, and, and like you said, Dwight, trying to help you build your team, whether that's a real estate attorney or an escrow officer, a title representative, you know, environmental consultant, all those things are, are fantastic. Um, so Dave, I think that, you know, I think you referenced that, and I think we, in Lee, we recognize that hiring, um, hiring athletes, people who are competitive team oriented people has, has been successful. And, um, Tell me a little bit about what you're doing from the standpoint of recognition. I think you do some interesting things that create and foster what I would think is really healthy competition and then recognizes success on a very regular basis. Uh, yes. Uh, 
you know, most people that are in this business, uh, you know, are very competitive by nature. They're self-starters. They, uh, you know, like uh, being in a motivated uh, culture like ours. And so some of the things that we do first is we show our numbers every month. So, you know, a older guy can walk around like a peacock and fluff his chest, but at the end of the day, everybody knows what his numbers are. So it brings us all back down to earth and, you know, we're trying to row the boat the same way, and that is uh, make profits and increase uh, sales for everybody and put everybody's uh, pockets a little bit bigger with some cash for working so hard. But we also like to have fun. And, uh, you know, one of the things I always say to myself is, how can I make this business more fun, but also be very competitive and, you know, have some accountability? And so we have the money ball. I think a lot of people have seen the money ball videos that have been going on. And literally, that's something that is a money ball that I won when I was 27 years old uh, in South San Francisco, because I did one of the biggest deals in South San Francisco for that year. And I won this contest and I got the money ball. So that money ball that you see in those videos has been floating around for a very, very long time, because I'm certainly not anywhere near 27 anymore. But, but it's a blast. Everybody tries to compete against each other, and it's proudly shown in their office or cubicles when they win it. We have uh, ring the bell. You know, when somebody uh, does a deal, they ring the bell. It gets everybody motivated that, uh, oh, boy, I better make some more calls or I better get this deal closed or whatever. And then we do, you know, training like uh, Dwight had mentioned uh, in our trainings, uh, at the end of every training, we do a QA. and a So there's a list of 20 questions, and we know if they paid attention or not because we're going around asking the questions. And whoever wins, you know, gets a gift card. And so everybody likes uh, the money. They like the Starbucks gift cards. And then we go out and have happy hours. So we try and make it a very, you know, fun, cool kind of place to work. We're all in this together. We're all trying to do the very best we can. And I think that sets the culture for the firm. And San Diego, uh, Carlsbad was uh, just a great firm for me to be a part of. And they uh, really helped uh, me with the training program as well. We all sat in a room and figured out what do we need from our young people and how can we help them be more productive. And that has carried on into Charleston and now into Atlanta. And I think it is very success, successful. And our younger agents need to know that we care about them and re really want them to succeed. And part of that is making sure that they see us being visible and helping them. Dave, right. you know, the, the great thing with that is that that carries on. Those young brokers talk to young brokers at other firms, and they talk about how much fun in the culture. And there's no training going on at these other firms. So when they right. hear, about what your brokers are getting, it, it gives them an eye to make a move and it helps you in your recruiting for potentially. Yes, it actually has helped us for sure. Yes. Yeah. That's great. So, so Dwight, let me ask you about mentoring and the importance of mentoring because you have a really large, productive and supportive group. How, how important have been the mentor-mentee relationship with, with some of your senior people and people that you've brought into the firm? It's, it's vital to have your shareholders buy in on being a mentor and being that person that associates can turn to. You know, we do have some that start as interns where the company pays half and the shareholder pays half for a 15-month program. And then after that, hopefully the associate carries on with that shareholder. But regardless of that, what I try and do is make sure that our shareholders at some point are all involved in our training and the role playing, or they get to know the associates. And part of, part of our program for associates to become shareholders is that they build a relationship and get to know all the various shareholders, not just ones in their discipline. So mentoring to me is the most important part of it. Um, you know, sharing those uh, frustrations that shareholders may have had when they were coming up the ranks. And it's it's all about managing the expectations because to me in the business, there's a one-year wall, a three-year wall, and a five-year wall. And, and when they hit that wall, you know, you want someone that'll help them make that jump over to the next level. 
whether it's a deal they're doing with a shareholder, whether it's you know learning from a mistake they made, but those kind of things are really important for a mentor to be present. Yeah, that, thank you. That's great. Uh, so let's transition a little bit and let's talk about the other group, the group that provides stability and that has a market presence, the more senior agents, the mid-level and the experienced agents. You know, it's great to have this very energetic young group and they're out prospecting and they're doing some of the things that uh, more senior agents lose track of, right? They don't have as much time to prospect. They're more deal oriented. They're building relationships and they're doing some more networking. But I think sometimes we overlook the need to manage mid-level and senior agents. So Dave, talk about what you do for that group that is helpful and creates continued energy for them. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, sometimes uh, they may feel like uh, they're not getting the same treatment or the same attention. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I like to do is I just like to go in and sit down with them and say, how's your business? What are you doing? What do you think is good? What do you think is not so good? What do you need to do personally to better yourself, whether that's working towards your SIOR or your CCIM designation, which I think is incredibly important in these days, even for our younger mm-hmm. agents, CCIM 101 class, just for the financial part of it is so incredibly important. But there's a lot of our agents who kind of get stuck in, you know, like you said, that five-year rut or whatever. And so the important component, I think for us is, you know, your business plan. You know, you present a business plan every single year and the business plan isn't for me. It doesn't help me. It's really your guideline of what you plan to do and how you plan to do it during the year. And that gets them focused. That gets them refocused. And then typically, like Dwight had mentioned, we sit down at the uh, middle of the year and say, "Okay, what's worked so far? What hasn't worked so far? And again, keep them focused and engaged on what they are you know, doing and what discipline they are doing. The other is just being part of the office. I mean, some people go in an office, shut the door, and then they wonder why nobody comes in and talks to them or they're not being brought into deals or, you know, whatever it may be. And it's like you have to engage with other people in the office. And so, uh, you know, a lot of them are saying, hey, I'm interested in a younger person with me, but I don't know how to go about doing it. And I don't make enough money to pay for them. Uh, that's always a perfect. There's never the right time to bring somebody in. But if you have a business plan and you state you're going to do X and you need to do something like bring somebody in junior that maybe does more cold calling than you do uh, so you can service your clients and get more business. Those are the things that we talk about. And it's not one particular thing. It's it's a lot of little things. And if you kind of meld those together and keep them focused and keep them working towards their goal, they usually become very, very productive and maintain that. Dave, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, sometimes senior brokers get in their lane and they just stick with it and they feel like they don't need necessarily to do a business plan. And to me, whether it's a business plan or it's a pitch they're going to do, it's the five P's. Proper planning prevents poor performance. And I, I think when you sit down and look at your business and spend some time, and it's we're not here to tell them how to win more business. They're really good at doing that. But maybe we can offer insights into things that other brokers that we've managed from other roles we've had, what have they done that's a little unique that might help them gain more traction? Or what is your brand... What is your brand marketing strategy for yourself? How are you marketing yourself out there? Um, Are you as a senior broker really utilizing social media? Is that something that's out of your comfort level? If so, how or what can our marketing group do to help you in that? Because it's just going to exponentially help you grow your revenue. Totally agree. That's great. Uh, I, I agree entirely. So Dwight, just quickly... So I know when we talked about the productivity of your office last year and, you know, there was so much concern about, you know, what was going to happen. We were all having conversations in the first and second quarter. And then you transition to this wildly popular, uh, wildly productive year. And then you shared with me that it wasn't just my industrial brokers that were top agents. It was my my retail brokers and my office brokers. And I think people will be shocked to hear that. And, and those and some of those people I know really well and they're 
productive senior brokers. How did you keep them or how did you jointly keep them kind of out of this disenfranchisement and, and this idea where there was no deals and then the, that office was dead or retail was dead? How, how was that engaged? You know, I think that one, they're, self, they're incredibly um, self-starters and very motivated on their own. They've been longtime productive brokers, but you, I think you reflect, we reflected back on what went on in 08, 09 and the mistakes that were made by people that kind of put their head in the sand and wait for it to pass. So I would really keep in touch on a constant basis with many of them, knowing and seeing how industrial was going. It was really to keep our office and retail brokers focused and motivated. Um, and, you, you know, maybe offering some insights into ways to be that advisor, involving them on, um, on podcasts or webinars that dealt with trends during COVID, having them involve their clients in those type of things. Um, anything you can do, because people are craving information. If you're the one that's in front of it and offering that and off, trying to offer solutions in the short term, you're going to gain that business over the long term. And what we found was our brokers were actually getting business and winning business in the moment. And as the year progressed, um, and things started to maybe open up a little or people weren't as concerned as in March and April, they they really struck um, some gold with it. So it was it was great to watch. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, OK, so let's talk about culture. I think all real estate firms love to talk about their culture. Their culture is better, you know, and, and, and I'm not really sure that people understand what culture is. For me, culture is all of the things we're talking about, how we recruit, how we train, how we motivate, how we compensate, how we generate some fun. But I'd love to hear from you, Dwight. So what does culture mean for you? And, and how do you as a leader try and engender a specific culture? You know, culture really to me is the thread of what ties together the staff, the agents and the leadership of the office. Um, if you have a culture of closed doors, or no communication or constant disputes, you'll really get, have difficulty recruiting or retaining people. Um, you know, it's a little bit like what we talked about when Dave was talking about his junior brokers and what he does to motivate them. Word of mouth goes through the market and people know what the culture of that office is. So, you know, I walked into a situation that had a, a good culture and just tried to build upon it with. Uh, in an out, in and out burger event or a summer picnic, we've done our. I established an Al Fabiano Award for our offices that can go to any of our agents. It just brings people together and ties the history of our office into what we're doing now. And I think it it's collectively allowed for people to feel a sense of family in our offices. Yeah, that's unbelievable. That's great, and, and so. Dave, I know that it's been really important in your engagements in uh, in Carlsbad and in, in Charleston, and, and I even know in Atlanta over just a year and a half period, and then even what you're doing in Nashville and how careful you've been about the people, because I think culture is incredibly important to you, and I think you work as hard on any element of the building and rebuilding and establishment of your office. So talk a little bit about why culture is so important to you. Well, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. my philosophy has always been, uh, and I just come from the military background, and my father was in the military, grandfather all the way back, was that uh, you, you got to put the time and effort in, and but you got to have a little fun doing it. And uh, it's not always going to be uh, easy and fun and all that. And when the times get tough, you can digging into that inner soul of yourself and the people around you to get you through those. And I think we're really a family. I mean, we're a work family. And so we need to get along. We need to play well together, just like Dwight says. So you can't have the, the outliers there that aren't participating because, you know, it doesn't fit the culture of the firm. Our culture of our firm in Atlanta is that we're inclusive. Everybody's part of this uh, ship that we're pushing forward. And if they're not, then they're probably not the uh, right fit for us at Lee and Associates. And so 
there is an expectation that you are going to participate. And uh, even the young ones know that they participate. And so for me, the culture is about being the best you can be, really. And that's an old army term, but uh, you can't be average in this business. So why not enjoy ourselves, work really hard, have a fun working environment because it is tough. It's not an easy job. Uh, and let's see how good we can grow this firm. And for our younger people, I always say, I want you to be a shareholder one day. We didn't hire you just to be an associate. We hired you to grow with the firm. And so there's an expectation from the very get-go that your expectation when you come into this firm is that you're going to be a shareholder someday. And in San Diego, our youngest shareholder was 28 years old and he worked his butt off and he's a shareholder to this day. So there's there's no reason for, for somebody in their 20s to think that they got to wait till they're 40 to be a shareholder. No, it's about production. And so we give them all the tools possible to be as productive as possible. And I will say, uh, you know, credit goes out to our marketing departments. And I would say San Diego, Charleston, Atlanta, you know, we have great marketing people. They uh, do their best to make us look good each and every day, because if I try to do it myself, there is no way I could do it. But there's way people smarter than I am that understand the marketing side of it. And like Dwight said, this goes back to the mid guys or even the junior guys. If you get your name out there, you got to be a marketing machine. That is just the way this business is nowadays. And it's important for each and everybody to get in front of a camera and talk about their markets, talk about their discipline, talk about their community, whatever it is that excites them and makes them feel good and gets that out to their customers that's an important component. So uh, we're evolving and I think we have to adapt or die is really the motto. Yeah. Great. So we, you talked a little bit about growth, Dave, and, and, and I think culture, if it's going to survive, needs to grow. And so how does it grow? We bring in agents like Dwight's targeting. So two to three years in the business or in another business with some sales experience. But we also talked about this mentor mentee relationship being so important. How do we encourage or how are you encouraging, Dave, uh, senior brokers to be in that mentor mentee relationship and, and not view, you know, as a, a new broker or new to business person or someone who's just left their transitional research spot to be on their team um, as, a, as a benefit and as an asset, not just a piece of luggage they have to carry around to meetings? Well, I agree. I mean, you know. I uh, had junior guys working uh, with me and uh, they're now principals in our office. But my expectation with them was, hey, I want you to be a shareholder uh, one day. And so you got to put the time in. And if you want me to spend the time with you, you got to put the time in to do it yourself as well. And uh, I, I just think that is so importantly important to have the right people in the firm because if they all understand that and they all have that mentality it makes the job a lot easier but i will say you know that was a, a big issue even for me was why do i want to spend all my time training a guy that may or may not be here a year from now and that's really where in san diego we came up with the tr program is how can we give the senior people a young agent who you don't have to teach them how to use CoStar. You don't need to teach them how to use Land Vision. Uh, they actually can make cold calls. They can do a presentation. And that is where this TR program came into is that we will teach them. They will spend a year to learn the business instead of being on straight commission, learn the business, understand what we do, how we do it. And it gives everybody a chance to see both sides in action because there could be a, a team that may need a junior guy or a couple of senior guys, and they're watching the junior guys to see how they perform and how they work. But also keep in mind, you senior people, that the junior guys are watching you guys as well. What's your work ethic? What are you doing? How do you do it? And so it's a two-way street. And so I think that is an important component. And the other is the senior guys need to understand that they're not going to be here forever. 
I wish we all were, but we're not. And so in order for our firm, Lean Associates, to continue to grow and be successful way after us, you got to have some kind of a legacy, right? And the legacy is build your business up, transfer it over to somebody younger at some other point, collect some dollars along the way, and that firm continues on. That's the whole thing that we started, you know, with Lean Associates in 1979. Now, I wasn't here in 1979, but I really do believe in our Lee model. And that is why I've been here for 17 years. And it is, is you work hard, you play hard, but we have an incredible opportunity to build something really, really great. And that is what I'm teaching our folks in Nashville. You have, and even the people we're recruiting, you have an incredible opportunity that I didn't have. I mean, I've been with uh, this firm for 17 years, but don't take this very lightly. You know, you have a torch that you're going to carry into the future. And so grow your firm, grow your business, and grow your people to be the best they can be. Jeff, right. I, Jeff I would also add to that that many of our shareholders, especially the senior shareholders, are, are VC holders as well. And they are going to want those checks to continue on to see the offices grow their revenue. So it's in their best interest to make sure that they're growing those future shareholders, that business, so that it continues that part of it as well. Right. So, so the lease structure seems to provide some foundation for longevity and, and for incentive and for the concept of getting younger, building that profit pool, having associates earn in, create stability of a larger and growing group. And then kind of the, what Dave referred to is the, the life cycle is we're all not going to be here forever. And the goal is, I don't think anyone's goal is to be here forever, to be here long enough, uh, have enough earning capacity, maybe buy enough real estate to create enough passive income, and then transition it to that legacy, more junior group that has now become market leaders and created sustainability. And, and I know in your office, Dwight, you have you have a, a training program or a mentoring program. And, and can you just talk about some of the the elements of that? And I know you're providing some financial structure, which I think feeds into the incentive. Could you speak to that? Sure. So we, um, you know, what I want to make sure, as I said earlier, is that all the foundational, all the fundamentals of real estate, they're learning in the training. But again, the sales skill training part of it is vital. Um, and I think integrating in the shareholders to do that training is really important. I, I also think that um, for the shareholders to get to know those associates, and what it does is it allows the associates to start doing business with other shareholders as they start to build their own book of business. And I think it's really important. And one of the things we look for in an associate to become a shareholder is that they're not just doing business that their shareholders brought them in on, but they're building their own book of business. That's an, a vital, important part of moving on to get voted in as a shareholder. So, um, you know, we try and make sure I, I usually sit down once every other week with all of my associates, either a walk around or a little bit of a more, more formal one on one to check in on them and make sure that they're making progress on their financial goals. But even more importantly, on their goals towards their training, towards their relationships here, and what they're doing with their brand marketing strategy. Yeah, and I don't think that they get that level of connectivity at other companies, other com <clears throat> other competing firms, because <clears throat> there is so much incentive in our model to make sure that our young people who we invest so much in become successful, become stable, and then grow into shareholder role. Yes, and then they, they have that incentive to know that our firm allows them the opportunity to accumulate wealth through the profit sharing as a partner, through the opportunity to invest um, commission dollars into ownership of their own. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity. I think that's the carrot that's there for them. And it's up to us to keep that in front of them and motivate them to get to that point. Right. So that is so all of those things. And are mostly what I love about Lean Associates because it speaks to human nature, right? People want to do things that will ultimately be good for them. And they're also very good for the larger group. And I think that propels success and, and encourages success. So let's turn the topic now to, to management, management style. And how, how do you, so 
you you're a representative, the two of you of what I think is probably the largest group of successful managers in North America. We have so much great talent and we have talent that exists as manager only, player coach, brokers that became managers, grew into a role. And we have such tremendous leadership. And, and I think you guys are you know, very, very representative of some of the best of the best. So thank you. And I'm curious, what are you doing to get better? Because you have to evolve. How, how do you, Dwight, I'll start with you. How do you make sure that you are at the top of your game and how to make sure that you're continuing to elevate your group? So two things. One, um, I think it's really important, and I've had this for quite a few years, to have an executive coach. I've found that they can be a great sounding board and resource, not just of real estate issues, but what leaders in other industries have done to tackle or handle situations or how they've motivated people, how they've handled a conflict. Um, they're they're just a great resource for that. Or, um, you know, I've also looked at having an outside board. So maybe a board of three people. It could be a friend. It could be a colleague. It could be a client. And I've, I don't have that in the current role, but I've had that where that's a great resource as well. I think the other thing is, as you pointed out, Jeff, we have a great group of leaders within our firm and from previous experiences, other leaders, where you can lean on them for advice or thoughts and situations. And lastly, I'd say that any, any opportunity I have, whether it's an industry organization or a webinar, to learn a few nuggets of things from people who uh, do training for leadership, I'm always ears to hear what goes on with that so that I can prove my skill sets. Great, thank you. So Dave, I think that you would probably say you wouldn't ask any of the people in your office to do something that you wouldn't do or you haven't done. So you do a lot of training within your office. And so what do you do personally to, to make sure that you're at the top of your game? Uh, well, first is, uh, I don't know if anyone can see this. I do a business plan. So I do a business plan for myself. I do a business plan for our office. And so I can't be the leader of our ship if I don't have a plan myself. So I don't tell people to do something I don't do myself. The other is um, I'm still involved in brokerage. I don't think you can be a good manager or a good advisor to the younger people or even the senior and mid-level people if you're still not in the game. Because if you haven't been in the game for five, 10 years, it's it's not the same. Things have changed. And so while I'm not uh, working full-time in brokerage like I used to, I still love the thrill of the hunt. I still love going out and doing pitches with our, our folks. I still love being part of that marketing process. So, you know, I'm probably more involved than most presidents are, but I think that has allowed, you know, our firm to be more successful. The other is, you know, I'm, I'm hard. I'm probably my own worst critic. I'm hard on myself. I try and uh, be the very best I can be. And, you know, am I the slimmest I want to be or all this and that? No, but each and every day I say, do I, did I have a good day? Did I make a difference? Did I try and do the very best I could do? And I do. And the other thing I would say is uh, all of the three offices that I've had, the office managers have really been my boss. <laughs> because uh, I wouldn't be anywhere without those uh, three very successful, focused women that have guided our office and handled a lot of the things that I didn't have to handle and allows me to go out and focus uh, with the brokerage group and so forth. And so, you know, I, I do ask a lot of questions. I do talk to a lot of our presidents. I call you, Jeff, every once in a while. I mean, I, I love that about Lee and Associates. I would never go to another firm because I know I can't get that. And I had my own firm and, uh, you know, it almost killed me, but um, it was an experience. So I appreciate the Lee model that much more because we are so open and people are willing to help us and give us a hand because we do not know it all. Yeah. And that's a, so you, thank you both for those comments. And I would just say, Dave, you touched on something that I think people don't get a recognition of within Lee until they're here, which is how much help and support 
and how enthusiastic that help comes. So for people that have a long leadership history like you and Dwight, and even for myself, you know, I've leaned on all of you at times. And, and at times I've had the benefit of and the and the pleasure to to be of help just to many of you. And and I just think that if you find those connections within Lee, you can build that personal board that Dwight talked about. And, and you can find solutions, I think, to every problem. And and I think you can create best practices because of how many times it has been asked and answered, you know, over a 42 year history within Lee. So thank you. So I want to move on to, I think, our last topic here. Managers, presidents, we spend a tremendous amount of time in recruitment. So Dave, I'd love to hear just a little bit about what you look for in recruitment and, and maybe a little bit about your recruitment strategy that might be helpful to other people as well. Well, we're always recruiting. Um... There was a gentleman in uh, our Carlsbad office, I won't say his name, but we worked on him for five years before we finally got him to come over. So it, it's not always a short cycle. And, uh, you know, a year into it, he's like, why didn't you get me here sooner? It's like, we tried, but you weren't as receptive. So it's an ongoing thing. Uh, you know, there's always uh, changes going on in other firms and you you have to let everybody know you know, kind of what's going on, what Lee and Associates is all about, uh, especially in here in the South, I've noticed coming from the West Coast, that Lee is not as well known out here. And so we have a, a story that we need to tell. And a perfect example is, uh, you know, we signed up three agents last week in Nashville when we had our grand opening. And they didn't know diddly squat about Lee and Associates in Nashville. And uh, we had to tell the story, what we're about, why are we here, what do we do, how, how, how are we different than other firms, and how can you not just be a broker at a firm, but actually have some say in what happens with the firm and, and how you can be more productive and how you can put more money in your pocket. And so it's a story that we have to tell. So it's a story that all of us and all of our agents tell. And Dwight picked up on it or said it earlier as, Success breeds success. And so we are getting calls from other firms now that, you know, guys that say, hey, or, I'd like to have a lunch. Or they come in and they do a deal and they come into our office and say, well, I've really seen a lot of your marketing pieces. And marketing is key because there's a lot of firms, especially here in the Southeast, that don't do as good a job on the marketing side of it that we do. And we're blowing their doors off. And that's what I like. I like winning. And so, uh, you have to really stay in front of them. The other is, you know, we have a Atlanta Association of Realtors boards and, you know, you have to participate in those functions and, you know, pressing the flesh at the SIOR meetings and all those things that you need to do. But what I've found really successful is just other agents in our office saying, hey, have you thought about Lee? Uh, why don't you come have lunch with Dave or have a cocktail or whatever it is? And just let us tell you about Lee and why we think you would be a good fit. Because there are many people that are not a good fit for Lee and Associates that are looking to be spoon fed and looking to be have deals handed to them. And we don't want those guys. They're they're not gonna help us grow and succeed. And so we have to find that right entrepreneurial spirit and maverick mentality that we really love here. And so we're not going to change our firm to accommodate somebody from a larger firm just because they want us to spoon fed them deals or whatever it may be. So we don't get everybody, but the ones we do get, we usually retain them and keep them. Right. So Dwight, are you, tell me a little bit about your recruiting strategy and characteristics that you look for in recruits that have provided success. Yeah. First, I wanted to say Dave was spot on and that your biggest resource for recruits is your brokers in your office. I mean, they want to maintain the culture and they want to see the success of the office go. So they know much more on a day to day, the reputation of brokers, what clients feel about those brokers. And even for me to call clients to ask them, who is it you've been working with and impressed with? They'll give you candid feedback on who's working hard, what young broker is really coming up. So it helps in, in, in how and where you're navigating to target 
potential recruits. The other thing that I do is I'll look at my depth chart and say, where do I have gaps right now? You know, I'm pretty heavy on this in senior and industrial. I'm light on this in mid-level office. I need junior brokers in retail. So you start trying to fill in the gaps as well. Um, we just brought in a young man who's a former UCLA football player, uh, graduated this past year, and his dad is a developer. So it's in his blood, the DNA of real estate, and he has an athletic background. A lot of times our clients are developers will have kids that want to get in the business. And they've been through their life, they've been hearing about real estate and understanding real estate. So it, again, that ramp up time cuts down so much when you're bringing on someone like that. I also think that it's good to bring on someone who's maybe a little bit of an underdog because they're gonna be hungry. And they're gonna, as long as you see in them a work ethic, you can see throughout our business, brokers that have grown to become hugely successful that may not have the, I don't wanna say Ivy League background, but more of a privileged background. So uh, I'm excited about that. And I think also, we're challenged now in our offices with looking at how we can grow our diversity and who we're bringing in um, and opening those doors and opportunities to allow us to, to grow our diversity. Yeah, I think diversity is, is an interesting topic because a more diverse company accesses a larger talent pool. And that allows us to not only grow, but we start to look a little bit more like our clients do. And, um, and I think that's important going forward. Okay, so as we wrap up, uh, I wanna ask each of you to take one part of your role as a president, manager, leader, and tell me what doesn't work and what works really well. So uh, Dwight, I'll start with you. Just, and it can be any component or it can be something overall. I, you know, when, when looking at this role, the most important thing is our people. And if you're not present to your people, Dave talked about walking around the office, staying, making a point to have a communication with the staff, with your agents, with your shareholders, whoever it may be, you have to make everybody feel appreciated. And that will breed the culture you want. If you're going to be one who's solely focused on going out, doing business or neglecting that responsibility, which is a big responsibility as the president of the offices, our people, you're going to lose people or you're not going to have the culture that you want. Um, what works for me, it kind of goes along the same lines as over communicating. We do a quarterly newsletter in our office. It's something I implemented when I came in. We established that Al Fabiano Award, which ties the past to the present. Um, you, you can't make your business all about revenue. You have to have the personal goals and the personal touch to things as well. Great, thank you. Uh, that 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 uh, that's just going to be a tough one to follow. I'm sorry, Dave. Yeah, uh, I, but, I don't think I need to say anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you can do all that, you're going to have a great office. But so, Dave, if you just take a look at at your role and the vast experience you have as a leader and as a broker and, and as a trainer and a mentor, what what do you think? What have you found that it doesn't work, and and what really has worked for you? Well, I would say the first is being a full-time broker and a part-time manager. This is very, very hard to do. You, you're a slave to two masters. And uh, so finding that fine line, I know some of our offices, uh, you know, juggle with that all the time. And, and uh, I, I, they all need equal amount of attention if you're lacking on one versus the other. And the way I get around that is I always bring somebody in uh, to work on my deals with me. I never do it solo. I never do it by myself. I never want somebody to come in my office and think I cherry pick deals. I don't. They're clients that I've had for 30 years and I continue to work with them, which is an important testament to the younger people in itself is that, you know, I'm working with people that I worked with when I was in my 20s. And so we've kind of grown up together. And that's a really cool thing is the relationship part of it. I would also say not being involved. You got to be involved. You got to be involved with your office. It's not about you. It's about what are you doing to help your office? And it's it's not I, it's us. It's really us working hard to make this a successful place to be. It's being accountable. I mean, you got to be accountable. 
you've got to make some tough decisions and then you got to be able to stand and back it up. And you may not always make the right decision, but everybody knows, hey, I'm sorry if you made the wrong one and own up to it. So I think accountability is important. Um, training. You know, I hear this all the time from other presidents of other offices. I don't have a training program. Well, we didn't have a training program either. You got to start somewhere. There's not real estate in a box. I mean, figure it out. That's what we're here to do is figure out problems and help people make decisions. We're the advisors. So as a president, you got to figure it out. Come up with something. Start with something small and build upon it. Um, and then talking, I wouldn't say talking down, but talking at our agents, you know, we have to be respective of the fact that they're all professionals and they all are different and they all have different personalities. And so we can't treat one person the same way we treat another. And it's important for us to understand the psychology of people so we can do a better job in ourselves. And that's something that I'm continuing to uh, learn because People say I'm intense, uh, you know, whatever it is. And so I do try to have a softer side of me every once in a while. But at the end of the day, I have a mission and our mission is to grow our office and keep on growing. And so, you know, those are the important things. Those are things that a manager or a president of the firm need to be accountable for. Otherwise, they're not going to do a great job. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dwight. I, I just can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day to participate here to educate our group and, and the larger group that views this. And I want to thank you for your strategic, thoughtful, caring way that you've run your offices and recruited people and addressed your staff. And, and I think this will be incredibly valuable for people. I'm really appreciative of your time, and I hope to see you both soon. Thank you again for your participation. I'm Jeff Rinkob, CEO of Lee Associates, and I thank you for watching Link by Lee.